Thanks for taking a look at Snowflake. We built Snowflake for a simple reason. Organizations are collecting more data than ever before, but even brilliant people are struggling to tame it. What we built is a comprehensive and complete data warehouse in the cloud. It supports all your users, all your data, lets you pay as you go, and all with ease of use and zero maintenance. Today, I'll be showing you that through the eyes of the analytics team at CityBike, the citywide bike share system in New York City. First, we'll load data as Sam, the data engineer. Then we'll analyze that data as Christina, the writer engagement analyst. We'll even answer some deeper questions by bringing in a secondary semi-structured data source to analyze in unison with our CSV. We'll do it all in under 10 minutes. First, I'm gonna don Sam's data engineer hat. Now, my job as Sam is to get this writer CSV loaded for Christina as quickly as possible. As an organization, we have to understand what's influencing our writers and how we can serve them best. We hope to do that by looking at this data and seeing when, where, and how people are using our bikes. Now, I've already staged that CSV in an Amazon S3 bucket and created a database to host the data. All I need to do is create a table for the data and then a compute resource or warehouse that I can use to load it with. Because this data source is only a couple of million records, I can use the smallest warehouse in Snowflake to load it with, and I'll have it auto-suspend after it's idle for an hour. That way it won't cost me anything after I'm finished. Now that I have my warehouse started, it's time to create the table and then load the data. I'm just using standard SQL here in the worksheet within Snowflake. Once the data is finished loading, it's good to go. There's no tuning or indexing or partitioning. Christina is ready to use this data. Now I'll be back to Sam in a moment, but let's step into Christina's shoes and start analyzing this data. The first thing that I see when I log in as Christina is the load warehouse that Sam is using. Now, I could use this same warehouse if I wanted to, but I can create a separate, completely independent warehouse that I can use to analyze the data concurrently. There's no sense having to use the same compute resource and bump into one another when I can have my own warehouse with the freedom to query and hit the data however I want to without affecting whatever Sam is doing. Now, let's take a look at this data that Sam was nice enough to load up. My goal is to figure out how we can get more writers and investigate any drops in writership as well. I'm just going to use some standard SQL statements to check this out. First, let's take a look at the number of trips over time. Obviously, there's some fluctuation, but the days with the lowest number of writers seem to be clustered in mid-February, around the 14th, 15th, 13th. You can see it right here. I wonder if the average duration of trips is low for those days as well. Here we'll take a look at the days with the lowest average trip duration, and you can see that February 15th is the sixth lowest. So indeed, those days in February had not only a low number of rides, but also a very low average trip duration as well. Clearly, something was going on in those days that was discouraging riders to ride at all and to keep their rides as short as possible. Was it the weather? Let's ask Sam to pull together some weather data for us to analyze with this. All right, one more time we'll put the Sam hat on and load some additional data that Christina needs to find out why ridership was low around February 15th. Luckily, I found some JSON data that contains weather from around the world, which we can use in this analysis. Again, even though this is JSON semi-structured data, I'm going to load it into Snowflake with the exact same method and SQL tools. Here you can see the table that I'm going to create for the JSON. I'm going to flatten some of the data into columns and store the nested data that remains in the variant column type, where I'll be able to transform it down the road or use it natively if I have a need. I find it's best to maintain the flexibility. Once I have the table, it's time to load the data from the S3 stage into the table using the extra small load warehouse again. Once this data is copying, Sam's job is done and we can go back to analyzing the data as Christina. Sam's loading the weather data, but my job doesn't stop just because there's data being loaded. Let's look at the most popular days of the week. It looks like Wednesday and Thursday 
are the most common days for people to ride our bike shares. But what about our core customer? It might, might be interesting to look at birth year to see who likes riding our bikes the most. We can see by looking at birth year that those that are born in the 80s are by far the most common riders in our system because we can see that a lot of people ride during the weekdays and a lot of people are riding in their 20s and 30s, we can judge that generally young professionals are big fans of our city bike system. Let's check to see if Sam's loaded the weather data. I can go over the history tab to see anything that's been happening in the database. Here we can see Sam loading the data from 1030 and 11 seconds to 1030 and 51 seconds. And at the same time, we were using a different warehouse to analyze. But even though these actions were happening concurrently, they didn't affect one another because the warehouses are completely independent. Let's go back to the worksheet and start analyzing these data sets together. First, we'll take a quick look at the weather data set as a whole. Now, there are two problems that are preventing me from analyzing this data exactly as I want to. First of all, this contains information on cities across the world, and I'd like to filter down to just New York City. Second, I want to break out the type of data from the nested structure within these variant type columns. To do that, I can create a brand new view. Now this view will filter down to just New York City and also break out the type of weather. This is a lot more useful in our analysis and will help us find out why exactly we had such low ridership in those days in February. To get started, Let's see what the average trip duration was during different types of weather. Clearly, snow had the lowest average trip duration, followed by fog. But really, we want to know if those days in February had bad weather. If we filter down to those days, we can see those low ridership days corresponded to a massive snowstorm that drove the lower ride numbers. Now, we'd obviously want to do more data analysis in a Looker, Tableau, or MicroStrategy, but we have a strong start. I know our core customers in their 20s or 30s, that they ride city bike to commute to work, and that our customer base is heavily influenced by the weather. Now that we're done, I'll go back to the Warehouses tab and suspend the two warehouses that we were using. Once I suspend the compute resources, they won't charge me anymore, and I can also configure them to auto-resume so that I don't need to come in here and restart them the next time I want to use them. And that's the end of our demo. In a few minutes, we've loaded relational and semi-structured data into the same database. We've created independent compute resources for a data engineer and for a data analyst. And we've successfully analyzed these two data sets together to find important insights about our writers. We've done it all concurrently without bumping into each other or affecting each other's workloads. No other database allows such ease of use, native support for all of the data of your business, seamless elasticity, and all with standard SQL and transparent pay-as-you-go pricing. If you want to try Snowflake for yourself, go to snowflake.net slash free dash trial. We're confident that in a short amount of time, you'll be able to start enabling your team and turning your data from a roadblock to an accelerator.